right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Everything Theater Podcast, the podcast where we talk about everything theater. Hi, I'm Benita Zahn. And I am Ellen Cribbs. How are you doing today, Benita? I'm great. And yourself? I'm doing well. Thank you. <laughs> Listen, you know, I always say vertical and getting a paycheck and anything beyond that is gravy, so. Especially in these days, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Speaking of these days, I thought it would be interesting. I've seen a lot of people posting about this article before we introduce our guest. I thought this was an interesting thing going on. Um, there was an interview of Jennifer Gardner and Dr. Fauci, and the headline uh, that everybody posted from the interview was, we won't be able to sit in theaters without masks until a year after an effective coronavirus vaccine is created. Right. which got everyone in the theater very upset. I mean, that's awful, awful news, right? Um, but I think it's really important to kind of talk about the full quote from Dr. Fauci, which is, if we get a really good vaccine and just about everybody gets vaccinated, you'll have a degree of immunity in the general community that I think you can walk into a theater without a mask and feel like it's comfortable that you aren't going to be at risk. So this whole, it's a year after the vaccine, that's, like theater as normal, right? Where people can sit without being socially distanced, without masks, but we are, the theater is way too em impassioned to wait for that. <laughs> and, yes, and yeah. frankly, um, if you, as I know you do and I do follow the news, um, the acceptance right now of a vaccine is not even 30% of the American public at this very moment is willing to roll up their sleeves mm. and get the vaccine mm. um, for myriad reasons. But so maybe every time we do some sort of a Zoom event, you know, you got to say, please. But there's so much question about the efficacy and the safety of a vaccine in this very moment. Yeah. So I think right now we... Um, I think it's masks for the time being and creativity. Exactly. And I think it's that creativity that is so fascinating to see what people are doing, which is what we've been talking about for six months on the podcast. Exactly. Um, so when but, we say everything theater, we mean it. Front of the house, yeah. behind the house. And it was very exciting this summer, the very first theater that uh, Actors' Equity gave the green light to, to do if you as close to a regular, real, normal show was at the Berkshire Theatre Festival mm -hmm. uh, to do Godspell. And Kate McGuire is the artistic director and CEO. And she's our guest for this edition of Everything Theatre. Hi, Kate. Hi, how are you, ladies? How nice to be with you on a Tuesday evening. The show closed Sunday, and I'm with two remarkable women. It feels mm. very good. Thank you so much. And we didn't pay her to say that. No, you did not. <laughs> no, we have been lovely. waiting for the opportunity to talk to you, Kate. Um, I, probably since the day it was announced that you would be doing a show yeah. as close to real as possible. I want to ask, really for starters, you know, you crafted this well, and we'll get into how you crafted it so that it would be both a wonderful and fulfilling experience and a safe experience. But I wanna take you to opening night. Was there a moment or 20 where your heart was a little in your mouth and in your chest rather, and you said, yeah, I was right. Your heart in your mouth and going, are we doing this okay? Will everyone be okay? I think that opening night, honestly, what I noticed were people's heads, many heads just dropping and they put their hand, their faces in their hands and they were crying. People were crying when the show started. And, and it was startling for me to realize, I was sitting next to my daughter who's a dancer, who of course, she was in a show in New York and she came back to the Berkshires in March. And she dropped her head and then I looked around and I realized a lot of audience members were doing that. And then I realized they were quivering. And that happened often. But to see that opening night was just incredible. And, you know, I, I don't often talk about the reviews because I don't often talk about the reviews, but I also realized later when I was saying goodbye to Ben Brantley that evening, who was there, 
And he said, my mask is completely wet from tears. That was sort of astonishing. And so it was so unexpected. I, I didn't know if people would show up. And the reaction was so unanticipated um, that I don't, rem I don't remember thinking much until when the audience applauded at the end. I thought, oh my gosh, we did it. Now we only have to do 48 more. <laughs> I think not. If, I know I'm for Clempton hearing you tell that. <laughs> it was it was an amazing moment. It really reminded me. I've been the artistic director at Berkshire Theater for 26 years, mm -hmm. and been in the theater my whole life. You know, and it reminded me again of what the power of theater is in a fundamental way. Look, there are so many theaters that have not been able to open. What made you so sure that you could? So um, I, I've been thinking about that the past few days only because it's over now. And when we left the offices on March 11th, the theater closed down and we began to cancel performances and productions. And then in April, I, I, I saw everything in the Berkshires closing down. And the Berkshires is so dependent, as you know, on the culturals. And the Berkshire Theater Festival is going to be 100 years old in a few years. Mm. And I was like, wow, I'm going to be the one with the asterisk next to their name that says she didn't produce that year when everybody else had produced through wars, through depression, all of it. At the same time, my daughter had been appointed deputy mayor in New York City in charge of the COVID response. Mm. So she was in charge of it, the epicenter. And I kept hearing the stories from her about ordering refrigerator trucks and being in places that I never, I mean, it was a war zone, right? In New York City? Yeah. And I thought, oh, this is just, there's got to be a way for something to finally happen. And she was, she inspired me so much that I thought, well, I can't be charging ahead in New York City and I can't, you know, I'm not on the front lines like the hospital workers. So I'm just gonna do our, theater thing. And then I started gathering information. And the more information that I gathered, I thought, by August, maybe it'll be okay. And I just never let go of Godspell, because we were always going to do Godspell, but Godspell felt like the one that would speak to us with the most poignancy and help us. And so you know, I'm my parents' children. They were always like, you know, dogs after bones when they wanted something. <laughs> so I just kept going. And at one point, equity denied us. In our first, you know, we sent them a 20-page document. We had studied, and I, when I say we, I mean the team, my, our staff, and everybody was responsible for a certain area. Some were responsible for backstage. Some were responsible for sorting through what would happen with the audience members. Others, the production itself. So we'd all divided up, studying what we could, talking to the local hospital. I was getting a lot of information from New York City from my daughter who was just emailing as she collected information. I have a wonderful trustee in, who works for the Hospital Association in New York. So we became public health experts. And we submitted, I think it was about 20 page document to equity to tell them how we thought we could accomplish this. And I got a very brief letter that said, no, we're not giving you permission. And that was when everybody was hearing no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the letter was so brief that when I spoke to our rep at Actors Equity, I said, you know, could you craft a different kind of letter? <laughs> Look, this letter is not polite. <laughs> it is not mentioning what we're all going through. Our industry is going to be devastated. 
And at least acknowledge all the work and you have done. Acknowledge the work that all of us are doing. Right? Yes. And so I was on a Zoom call with two people from Equity as a result of the call with my rep because he was like, oh, you're upset, Kate. I'll let people know. And then I was on a Zoom call and I said that letter, it just wasn't polite. Could I help you craft the letter? <laughs> Please. Yeah. You know, I'm old now. It's like, just be polite. <laughs> and so I then went off because the theater, and I know you perform, and Ellen, you understand the theater is what we do. It's our life. We know what it means to other people. We know what it means to children. The programs that we have in the schools, all of it, we know what it means. And I kept thinking there's got to be a way for us to get through this. There has to be. And I thought, okay, I'll take these 10 kids. They were all in their 20s. The oldest was 33. And they'll be like my babies. And I'm not going to let my babies get sick. I mean, really, you start thinking in that way. And on the phone, one of the members of Equity said, would you consider moving your opening date and talking with us some more? Mm. I said, what all good actresses say, I will say yes till I have to say no. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went through a two month process with Actors Equity. Wow. And at the end, there was like a 35 page document that covered everything. And I knew once I started talking to them that I would also be able to keep our audiences and our staff safe. And the numbers in Berkshire County dropped. I mean, we had a very bad experience like so many places at the very beginning. And then the numbers were under 1%. I mean, there was a month this summer when no cases of COVID were found. So that helped a lot. I don't want to pit you against another theater, but also, you know, Barrington Stage also got the- Yes. Other. Julie and I talked a lot. Mm. And then they were running and then Equity shows up and goes, oh, by the way, I want you to change what you're doing. Yeah. You know, when I read that, you know, Ellen and I talked about that. That's the one of those, oh my God moments. You, you've got it up and going and it looks like it's good. Did you ever have a moment where you thought, oh, please, just don't come knocking on my door because it's working? Well, I think that the moment you're talking about is when the state told us we couldn't have 100 people yeah. mm -hmm. and we had to cut back to 50. And it was alarming. I was on the phone that weekend a lot with Julie and we were trying to figure out if we could get some kind of a waiver. And then I just sort of let go and thought the production is up. We'll perform to 50 people a night. We had trustees that were very generous in supporting us because clearly we weren't making any money. I mean, you can't with 50 people in the audience, really. When we're at a th outside a theater with 700 seats, <laughs> it's like, okay, everything's changed. There were a couple of moments that I thought early before the actors arrived, I don't know if we should keep going. And I had... Um, a board president that was like, you're going to keep going, go ahead. <laughs> it's like, okay, <laughs> I guess I'll keep going. So then why ultimately? I mean, we understand in our hearts, but why? 50 people, you're not making any money. You're all singing and dancing and, you know, producing and as hard as you can, but you're not making a penny. It's probably costing you money. It costs money. But it always costs money in the theater. We're always dependent on donors, right? I mean, I can't remember the last time I had an audience that came and paid for the entire production. The ticket sales cover 50%. Mm -hmm. um, I just felt it was what we do. And there were other businesses, restaurants were somehow figuring it out. And I couldn't let go. I mean, I remember saying to the staff, if I have to get out there and juggle, I'll juggle. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, you did, but in a different kind of way. Yes, thank you. I just couldn't let it go. I don't know. And when, when it all came about, I realized that theater has given me, gave me everything in my life. Every door was opened through the theater my children the same. And then the education programs began to do that for other children. And I, I've seen the impact. 
and I couldn't let it go. And I couldn't imagine a Berkshire summer without something happening. Mm. Um, well, bravo. Thanks. I know you're freshly wrapped up with Godspell, but have you had any communication with equity in terms of, are they going to be using the model that you created to help other theaters kind of yes. do similar things? Yes. We had a lot of conversations. Um, we had a couple of zoom calls with other producers that actors equity set up. So I could speak about some of what we were going through. And honestly, Ellen, you know, we were responding to four sort of conditions, health-wise, mm -hmm. low COVID rate, make sure there's testing, make sure there's masks and social distancing. But then about halfway through the process, I said, I think we need to add another, a fifth condition. And that is that the staff and the actors need to be prepared for the level of stress. Because during the course of it, you know, 5% out of 100 tests come back false positive. Mm. We had five false positive tests. Wow. And every time that test would come positive, it was heart stopping. I mean, we knew that the actors were all in a bubble. They'd all been together. They were tested three times a week. Mm. Wow. Um, but the other thing that I've said to a lot of other theater producers is you just have to be prepared in a whole different way because you're becoming responsible for people's health. And, and we're always responsible for what happens on the stage, right? Um, you know, we don't want anyone tripping or falling. We're conscious of all of that. But this is life and death. Mm -hmm. So it was very different. So when you got those positives, the false positives. Yeah. What did, did the show go on that night? So the first one that came, um, it was a Monday. And so we were dark on Mondays, no show on Mondays. And about an hour after that positive test came, two more tests came because we were testing so often that sometimes they, the results would all come in a day. Two more tests arrived and they were both negative. Hmm. And so we were able to breathe a little easily. What we did though, was we always administered a third just to make sure. So every subsequent test that came back positive, um, we would do expedited testing. The hospital was so great with us. We had the understudies, fortunately for them, had a chance to go on. Um, so the understudies went on a few times, which was really nice because the at, we were waiting for those test results. But in the end, everyone was healthy, audience, staff, actors. But those false positives were heart stopping. Mm. So what would you do different? Or wouldn't you? Uh, you know, based on what, you know, what did you learn and how do you go forward? I, I um, well, we're planning, we're plotting. <laughs> We're plotting something outdoors for December, <laughs> a little holiday destination. Um, I, I don't know what I would do. I wish, I wish the federal government had a better response because the one thing that was really complicated was, I remember one of the calls with equity and the hospital here had changed the kinds of tests to that they were doing and it was the best test they felt and equity was like well, we don't like these tests you have to go someplace else and get other tests i was like this is berkshire county there's one hospital there's one test this test is the same test that's been given in albany um and i realized how fully each state is fighting on their own mm. to get their own tests to get, and, and as the virus was becoming more rampant in the South, the test results were coming back. It took longer and longer. So actually, I just wish that I had been able to have more of a voice in the politics of everything. I mean, so I didn't have time. Are you running for office now, Kate? No, I'm not going to run for office. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely spent a lot of time yesterday, though, donating money. The little money that I have, donating money to various causes. What are you doing this uh, holiday season? You want to tell us? 
I, I shouldn't because my Becky Briganti, our marketing director, will absolutely. <laughs> and I have well, to get the approval. Not... I have to get the yeah. approval from Equity. Oh, mm-hmm. you're still waiting. Okay. Because I, 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 would, I would, you know, I'd schmooze Becky. I would, I'd, I'd do that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Becky, come on. <laughs> I mean, what we are thinking, I can tell you what we're thinking though, is um, I have these two very sweet stories that are by a very well-known writer. <laughs> and, you know, we have a barn in Stockbridge. Yeah. And so I want to do the theater outside the barn. And the first piece is very short. People go skiing in the winter. People watch football games in the winter, right? Yeah. And then we'll open the big barn doors so that there's always ventilation and everything else. And people can step into another world and have a little, a good intermission and a break and hot toddies or whatever. And then go around back around the back of the barn and have another story told Mm. and then go off for their evening. Ellen, road uh-huh. trip. I know that sounds lovely. Road trip for sure. <laughs> road trip for sure. No, I'm I'm kind of curious, kind of going back to Godspell because talk about Kismet. That was just the perfect show. I feel, um, and one of the shows that historically has such creative freedom. A lot. Every production That's is right. different. Um, so, how much did the whole pandemic and everything that's going on in the world? How much did that impact? your completely. production yeah completely yeah we were going to be doing i thought we should do godspell i thought oh it'll be good before this fall season which is going to be madness with the election and everything and then i and a gentleman named alan filderman was the director and through the process i would say to alan i, I think these actors are going to have to wear masks at times and alan would say that's not godspell kate and i was like yeah well it is now <laughs> <laughs> And then at the very last moment, so it was approved on July 6th. On July 5th, we were on a call with Equity, with our set designer. And we created these, they were really beautiful, these clear screens that the actors could move around. Because the thing about a musical, of course, is people are singing and the spray is more dangerous. Mm -hmm. And I remember Alan Filderman yet again saying, we're not going to have screens on the stage. That's not Godspell. And I was like, Alan, it's Godspell in COVID-19. Right. <laughs> That's where we are. And once he started rehearsal, it was all about the actors, you know, the actors at the very beginning of Godspell um, often come out and tell their own stories or do something different and unique. You're right, Alan, it switches with each production. And so what our actors did was each one came out and spoke about where they had been when the pandemic hit. Mm. One was in a Broadway show, one was on the tour of Aladdin and their lives just stopped. And so you were immediately brought into this world of COVID and complimenting the piece because Godspell is essentially about a group of individuals each in their own chaos Mm. searching for community. So um, it just, it worked, it worked. Yeah, yeah. And those actors were very brave. They never saw friends or family all during all that time. Oh, wow. It's a long time. Given the way we started the program with, you know, talking about Fauci's saying how long it would be and when we'd be back. Do you anticipate doing a summer season again as you did this past year and perhaps more shows? I, yeah. I, th- I feel like what I work on now is two to three months out at a time. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I watch all of you on television and I wonder how in the world you are doing it. So complicated, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And, and so all I can think is, okay, let's go two or three months out. I'd like to think that all the shows that we had to cancel this summer will be the shows that we'll be doing next summer, but I don't know. Yeah. I mean, we'll do. Kate, what are your thoughts about the the whole um, Zoom, theater via Zoom? I, I say bravo to any theater that can happen, of course. And we did some things online, but I, 
I really ache to be with people and the live, it was astonishing to see that audience night after night and recognize what happens in a room, masked or not, the energy in a room when the thing is live in front of you is entirely different. Um, and, you know, I'm thrilled that we have Zoom. I'm thrilled to be talking to the two of you right now, but I'd rather be walking in and giving you good hugs and, you know, having different kinds of chats. The world is going to be different when this is over, isn't it? Very. And the whole energy of performing, uh, Ellen and I have both been there, is very different. I recently had an opportunity. I sing with my four o'clock co-anchor, Jerry Gressinger. <laughs> I know you do. Right? Yes. And we sang at Cafe Lena. And, you know, it was Jerry and myself and our pianist, and we rehearsed six feet apart, if not more. Yeah. And our spouses were there and three tech people. That's it. You know, masks, it was, they were on the tight ship and it's live streamed. And the next day I was exhausted. And yeah. I said to Cherry, he said, so is he. And he paused, he said, you know, because normally when you perform, you get energy back from your audience. Mm -hmm. But doing it like this, you only send the energy out. That's right. That's a really good point. It's so true, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's... um. I, I think we all sort of ache to be back with each other. And I worry a lot about our industry. I, I, I don't know how we're all gonna keep going. I worry about actors that can't get health insurance because they're not on contracts. Right. Um, I don't, it, look, there's a lot to worry about right now. <laughs> Equity is going to have to figure something out because if you've qualified for health insurance, you know, know. You know it's year to year. So you may have made it last year, but now this year you won't. So I know they got to figure. They've got to figure something out. But you know, we all were. None of us are real. I mean, we were fortunate in that we contributed. We paid our bond to Equity. We did all of that. But there's no money going into Equity right now either. Mm -hmm. I'm the. I'm also the keeper of the clock. Mm -hmm. and Are we at time? The clock tells me that we always do a, if you will, a lightning round. Okay. Ellen is in charge of it, and I'm never quite sure what she's going to ask in the lightning <laughs> round. <laughs> so, uh, all right, let's switch my brain. That's right. And this segment is really all about you, Kate. So, uh, we call it the close up. Uh, are you ready for your close up, Kate? Yes. Thank you. I've never <laughs> had a close up. <laughs> Well, you know, it's funny. My brother was like, why do you call it the close-up? Shouldn't it be the spotlight since it's theater? I was like, uh, yes, you're right. Oh, well. <laughs> but, no, I like the close-up a lot. That's so... <laughs> Perfect. Um, Uh-oh, well, we there we go. <laughs> so my first question in our close-up is, what is it about uh, theater? What was the moment in your life where you just knew, this is what I have to do. I have to be in theater. Um, I really think it was the first time I went to New York City. My, I was visiting an aunt that lived in New York City. And first she took me to Lord and Taylor's to buy a pretty dress to wear to see Mame with Angela Lansbury. And I don't know whether it was theater, but I was like, I want to be in New York and I want to be on Broadway and I'm going to do this. Well, I didn't actually, I've never left the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, <laughs> but that was sort of the moment. I mean, that's the story for so many of us, I think. Yeah. Is there a production or uh, an experience outside of that first intro to, to MAME that really just was amazing for you? Just a moment of like, yes, gosh, this is, this is theater. This is life. This is why I do what I do. I, I have to say it was, it's Godspell. Mm. I've never, ever experienced anything so raw. And I kept thinking, wow, after all these years and having to raise money and all of that, you start to get jaded in a certain way or you start to forget how important it is to people or to the people on stage. I mean, the other amazing thing is that they were young actors and they absolutely believe they will go through the rest of their lives believing that through theater you can accomplish great things mm. that 
was so fulfilling to see those kids. I kept thinking, okay, I can retire now. <laughs> Don't you care? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a good feeling. Are there other productions, this might be too uh, off the top of your head, but are there other productions that you think would lend themselves really well to, you know, post pandemic life, you know, theater that you're like, th this story should be told in these days. I think some of the Greeks should probably be given a look. I also think the Greeks might work because of the masks. Mm. So that might be interesting. Um, there, I, I wonder if by next year at this time, if we're not out of this, are we going to be doing all kinds of plays and just wear masks? Mm. Because we think it's normal to talk to each other that way. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I was thinking about that the other day. I thought, because we had Uncle Vanya planned for this year. And I thought, well, maybe we'll just do Vanya and people will have masks on on the stage. And It won't seem know. so weird in time, yeah. It won't seem so weird, maybe. Yeah. Who knows? It's starting to feel less weird. I know. I have a four-year-old grandson and he's got his little hooks that he keeps his masks on. And each day he picks after he dresses and if he goes out, he picks his mask for the day. That's awful to me. Yeah. Now, in all this time... Yeah. <laughs> Now, in these times, you've, you've done so much and I'm sure exerted so much energy, you know, to get Godspell going, to be working with equity, to be looking at future productions. What is it that just keeps you going, that, that keeps you from throwing in the towel and saying, oh my gosh, it's just too much work? I mean, it really was my daughter, Emma. Hmm. It was my daughter. I kept thinking about her and what she was going through and what she was living through. And I have three remarkable children, but this year, Emma was the, you know, Emma's the one that gets the extra holiday gifts. <laughs> um, yeah. I just thought, my gosh, she's getting up every day and facing that. And surely I can contribute in my field. Um, and I think of, I mean, the people on the front lines I go to the grocery store and I feel like bowing down to those people sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's incredible what people are going through. And I'm in the Berkshires, the beautiful Berkshires, sitting in my house, fairly comfortable right now. And, but for the grace of God, there go I, right? But you made life bearable yeah. this summer. And you showed us all there is a way. Mm -hmm to do this. Mm -hmm. It may not be for everyone and it may not happen frequently, but you know, to sort of steal a line and destroy it, you know, for one bright shining moment. Yes. That's a great line. Yeah. So, yeah, we did it. Yeah. I, yeah. I'd say that's a beautiful way to wrap up this episode. <laughs> Oh, I knew I would be so happy to be with you too. Thank you so much. What a gift this has been for me. Thank you. I'm going to go lift a glass of Chardonnay to the two of you now. <laughs> oh, thank you. And then when this gets a little less crazy, we'll come out and we'll lift that together. Just oh, so that would be so great. Thank Kate you. Fire. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Be well. Take care. And for our listeners, thank you so much. We'll, uh, we'll keep talking to you next time. Um, stay safe. God save the people.